Uh, next up is Aaron Bench uh, of Olympus Scientific Solutions, and the title of his talk are, is Geologic Logging with X-ray Vision. Thanks, Dave, and thanks also to Richard and the committee for the opportunity to get up and have a little speed dating session with you guys. We, we did think we had 20 minutes each, but then found out we were double booked, so um, apologies for too many slides, but I think I'll get through them pretty quick. So a great segue coming in um, straight behind James. You know, basically what I'm talking about is the sensors that are develop it, developing that data, which uh, James just put up. Uh, it's been our collaboration through DETC, our see elaborate rig that really reinforce those relationships. Obviously with our end, our end users, our sponsors, who are driving us in the right direction to, to, to develop and, and continue to, to, to do the research on these sensors that are going to continue to give us the, the data that we're going to need in real time. Again, I come to this conference and people still don't know the name Olympus, so the, the one mandatory slide is it was the Univex acquisition back in 2010. We're a big company. The, the good thing is we've got a, a, you know, nearly 100 years of uh, history in optics and image, image sensing, so it does make some sense, but we do fit into a, a very set business unit, which is around X-ray fluorescence and X-ray diffraction, which is where our industry overlap comes from. Pretty simply put, it's um, X-ray diffraction mineralogy, X-ray fluorescence for uh, chemistry, and we do have, a, have an, another natural connection there with, with more uh, traditional uh, mineralogy systems such as petrological microscopes, so, which can give us, give us things like structure and texture which we can't get from, from the other sensors. So. The, two, the two principles, again, I'm not going to dive into any detail. X-ray fluorescence, it's, a, it's an EDS, energy dispersive system, that can deliver fairly, fairly accurate and fairly low levels of detection with modern systems. And um, we, we have uh, the world's only portable systems for doing uh, XRD in the, in, in the field as well. So, so we've been combining these two systems to give us the ability to do real-time geological logging and domaining and lots of other fancy things that we can do with the data when we get it in real time and make these decisions that James has been talking about. So we do have lots of other products, but I'm going to focus on one in particular is that um, we've, we've just launched our fifth generation handheld. So this is an engine, basically. It's, it's a set of... Uh, you know, tubes and detectors plus electronics which can now deliver, uh, you know, industry, industry changing, you know, detection limits. And also, it's, it's the things that our industry has been asking for. It's reliability, it's, uh, it's the speed, you know, if we, can, if we can crank things up by three times the speed, it means we can put through three times as many samples. Talking to James' uh, um, topics around productivity and product managers, you know, that's where the rest of the world's at. If we talk about lean manufacturing, it's, it's how can we get more samples through in a, in a, in a quicker time uh, without compromising quality and, um, and detection limits. Um, plus, uh, new things like cloud-based systems. So we're, we're actually just this week uh, launching our Olympus Scientific Cloud, which is a, which is a platform for all Olympus products, which, which every device is tethered to. It delivers products via API to your standard systems, be it Acquire or Geosoft or Leapfrog without needing to export data, have database managers there massaging the data. So it's, it's going to be seamless. It's, again, it's all in line with the, the vision that uh, our industry is moving towards. One slide on each. Let's see if my videos are going to crank up. So, yeah, yeah our, our industry is really tough on gear. So, you know, IP65 drop testing is, is where the industry is now at. And, you know, if we did this a few years ago, people, people still cringe at these videos when they watch them, you know. $40,000 investment hitting the ground. But that's where we've got to because our industry now calls for it. So, as geochemists, it's all about the periodic table. How many of those elements can we get and how low can we get? So, and how quickly can we do it? So, again, we're, you know, we're pushing the boundaries with the physics of what we can do. And then now it's about elect electronics. You know, how quickly can we push those pulses through the system? You know, we you know, had a, a, fairly, a fairly large increase in um, our digital pulse press processing capability where we could triple the throughput. So again, it's, it's, it's adding that uh, benefit through productivity. And then to the side of that, we have our diffraction products. So delivering mineralogy. Um, it's a system that came off the Mars rover. I've given that talk at quite a few conferences and, and I will be again tomorrow at uh, our workshop. It's, it's a static system, no moving parts, uh, which can deliver us you know, routine mineralogy, which is something we've never had every metre down a drill hole. So, and again, we're advancing to, to push things like auto-loading and automated software in there to make it uh, very, very simple for us to get routine mineralogy every sample down a hole. So the work we've been doing is, is the lab at rig system that James mentioned, so combining these systems at the drill hole and delivering the data in real time. Uh, similar slides we've just seen, you know, it's, it's all web, uh, all uh, cloud-based. I think this one was back at PDAC this year. James was sitting on a plane flying from like, Dallas to Toronto and we were checking out a, a drill rig. Actually, it was the year before down in, down in South Australia. We were able to sit on the plane and see where the drill rig was while we were flying across. So uh, these things are happening right now. 
And what, we, what can we get out of it? I mean, these are, these are data sets that we've never had to play with before. So they're rich, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, multivariate data sets. We have quant, quant mineralogy on one side, which again, we've never been able to do that with diffraction before. Uh, we have uh, a couple of different uh, chemical attributes there, which we can then pass through um, classifiers like James was talking about, you know, doing uh, wavelet tessellation, doing various other techniques for doing domaining of the geology based on this rich multi-element multi, multi -element geochemistry set. So, and this is all before the geologists had even logged the rock. The, the log on the right-hand side here was Dave Giles, I think in one of the early holes that we did in Brakunga, where he'd only logged so far down the hole, but we already had this data set before he'd even looked at the drill core. So. And we know the data's good. You know, we've got a lot of big data sets. We've been working with Yulia's group at CSIRO, looking at you know, how can we improve the calibrations, get the precision better. Uh, and then once the data's that good, you know, what can we do with it? So some of June Hill's work around wavelet tessellation through how can we domain the data using, you know, we've got 30, 30 or 35 elements plus uh, quant mineralogy that we can pile into these algorithms to, to help us, you know, block out the rocks and, and work out what's going on. But probably the most valuable part of it's been the field testing. We've drilled a lot of holes in a lot of different places with lots of different clients, you know, with Anglo and with, with uh, Steve's group at the GL survey. Uh, there's a hole from uh, one of the MSDP holes that we did with Steve and, and you know, we continue to learn and continue to develop our sensors in line with, with these data sets. So they're, they're, they're unbelievably valuable to a company like us who couldn't traditionally get, uh, get our hands on these sort of data sets. And where are we moving right now? I mean, obviously our vision is around automation and robotics and trying to, to get these things into, uh, you know, completely automated systems, but our partner in Reflex is already delivering the next step, you know. How can we do some crushing and... and uh, sample prep and cloud-based delivery right now with the systems that we've already got. So. And the future, which we've all touched on, you know, as the drilling industry changes, how are we all going to work together? Quick thank you to the sponsors and I think I'll leave it at that. No. It's in an interesting place. So it, it's a technology which it's 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 sitting on the on the fringe. It's you know um, it's one of those things as a, as a product manager, as James <laughs> reinforce, is we have this um, you know, we have this bittersweet uh, trade off between how many you sell and, and how much R and D you can do. So it's it's an amazing technology, and we know the value of it. But until it really starts to to sing in the industry, it's tough to spend the money on getting that work done. But uh, this conference is a great example. We've talked with you know six or seven of the majors who've said we need this now, and and you guys informing that roadmap and telling us where we need to push it is, is really what we need. So we're getting some great industry buy-in. Now, obviously, Lab at Rig was the first time we've actually been able to, to deliver routine mineralogy down a hole. And now, you know, if we can put that into our block models in real time, we can derive our geomet parameters, our acid mine drainage, all these other things that we talk about. And again, this, this, this has been an underlying theme at this conference around these sort of data sets, is that's where we need to move to. So. Uh, my job as the as the product manager, essentially for the Olympus, is to make sure our products are aligned and delivering what they need to for the industry. So, so whoever would like to chat about that, my ears are certainly open to to continue that dialogue. So, thanks for the question, Richard. Too. So.